a little bit about congestive heart failure as well as the technique for proper suctioning a little later on in the presentation. Congestive heart failure is a very prevalent disease in today's society and it is a topic that is important to educate people about in order to efficiently prevent and treat it. Congestive heart failure is the inability of the heart to maintain a sufficient cardiac output in order to meet the metabolic demands of tissues and organs. This then causes a blood flow in circulation and in inability to increase cardiac output or an increased tissue metabolism. A focus assessment for this condition is usually directed toward observing for signs and symptoms of pulmonary and systemic fluid overload. And here I have a picture of a normal heart versus a congestive heart. You can see in the congestive heart, there's thickening of the ventricle chambers and um, a smaller filling capacity. In order to detect and monitor CHF, a series of subjective questions may be asked during the patient's appointment. One of the first in quest questions the nurse should ask about is the presence of any chest pain or dyspnea, as this is one of this is the most common symptom associated with any cardiac dysfunction. The nurse, um, if the pa patient does have pain present, the nurse should then complete an OPQRSTU pain assessment um, to better understand the patient's chest pain. From there, the nurse uh, should ask about other symptoms related to CHF such as orthopnea, so having trouble breathing while laying down, uh, fatigue, any uh, rapid weight gain due to the accumulating fluid in the lower extremities, um, or nocturia. It is also important to ask the patient about any past and family cardiac history as some conditions do have genetic factors that play a role in the onset of disease. Any possible risk factors that may also increase the patient's likelihood of developing the disease should also be discussed with them. And these include things like smoking, diets rich in saturated fats, um, a family history of heart disease, physical inactivity, stress, obesity, a high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, and diabetes. Afterwards, the nurse should move on to the assessment of the patient. The assessment should begin with the pulse and blood pressure along with the other vital signs, followed by an assessment of the upper and lower extremities, then the neck vessels, and finally the precordium. When the nurse inspects the patient, signs and symptoms of CHF she may detect would be gray, cyanotic, or pale skin, dilated pupils, a decreased urine output, which can be determined uh, if through the patient's catheter bag or just by asking, jugular venous distension, which may need to be uh, detected with a pen light, and restlessness or anxiety may also be present. During palpation of the abdomen, the nurse may feel ascites, which are a buildup of fluid in the abdominal cavity or an enlarged spleen or liver, also due to an increase in fluid buildup or blood needing to be metabolized. When palpating the extremities, the nurse may notice cool, moist skin, pitting edema, as well as faint pulses. Next, the nurse will move on to percussion. During percussion, the nurse will also assess for the presence of ascites, which will make a dull noise compared to the regular tympanic noise that the abdomen makes. Um, or you can assess for pleural effusion or fluid buildup in the lungs. This will also make a dull noise as opposed to a resonant sound, which usually occurs in healthy lungs. After percussion, the nurse will begin the auscultation part of the assessment. During auscultation of the heart, an extra third heart sound may be present and, as well as tachycardia. Auscultation of the lungs may reveal basal or crackles and wheezes. Now that the nurse has completed an in-depth assessment of the patient's uh, cardiac failure, they will have a better understanding of the pathology, pathology and treatment associated with CHF. Next, I'm going to be talking about the technique of suctioning. There are two types of suctioning, with both with distinct differences. Oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal suctioning involves inserting the catheter through the oral or nasal cavity and into the pharynx, where it is used to clear secretions from the upper respiratory tract. 
This type of suctioning is usually used for patients who have a patent airway but are unable to clear secretions effectively on their own. This procedure is a clean procedure since the mouth and pharynx are not clean areas and therefore do not need to be uh, sterile when completing the procedure. The next type of suctioning is nasotracheal and endotracheal. This is used to remove secretions of the lower respiratory tract and is inserted through the nose and into the trachea or through a tracheostomy tube. This procedure is sterile since it goes so much lower into the airway, which is more receptive to bacteria. And here I have a picture of um, both the oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal tubes. You can see where they go down into the pharynx. For both procedures, uh, since they are different, they do require different supplies, but many of these supplies are very similar. For both procedures, you will need suction tubing, a vacuum regulator, and a pulse oximeter to monitor for any oxygen desaturation that may occur. Drape the patient, a drape to protect the patient's clothes, a cup and sterile water, as well as an amesis basin for any vomiting or excess secretions that may come out of the patient's mouth. For orange oropharyngeal suctioning, you will need a yonker, which I have a picture of down below. It is the tip of the suctioning device that is being inserted into the oral cavity. You will also need some clean gloves as well as some oral hygiene supplies to help the patient to clean up when the procedure is over. For tracheal suctioning, you will need a special kit, which often comes with a sterile basin, sterile gloves, sterile drape, a small bore suctioning tip and tubing, as well as a swab. You will also need an oxygen mask in case of emergency, the connecting tubing, some water-soluble lubricant, and PPE as needed. The patient should be positioned in a semi or high fowler's position as well uh, for comatose or unconscious patients, the sideline position in order to prevent aspiration of these secretions. Before beginning the procedure, it is important to assess the patient's oxygen sat using the pulse oximeter to determine a baseline reading so that any significant change can be recognized and noted. After connecting the tubing, you will ensure the suction is working properly by inserting the tip of the catheter into a cup of sterile water and suctioning out a small amount. The catheter should be inserted into the patient's mouth, moving along the gum line until the pharynx is reached. Gently move the catheter around until all secretions have cleared. You may also want to use the sterile water to clear the tubing in between insertions in case it gets clogged. Suctioning uh, should also not be done for any longer than 10 seconds at a time as this can cause deoxygenation and hypoxia of the body's tissues and organs. For tracheal suctioning, uh, you will want to use a minimal amount of water-soluble lubricant on the tip of the catheter for easier insertion, but not so much as to occlude the catheter. The catheter should be in inserted when the patient is inhaling as this opens up the epiglottis. If able to do so, you should also try to ask the patient not to swallow when the catheter is being inserted as this can cause the tube to enter the esophagus. Using your dominant thumb and forefinger, gently but quickly insert the catheter into one of the patient's nares. Instruct the patient to inhale deeply while you insert the catheter following the natural course of the nares and slightly slanting the catheter downwards. Apply continuous suction by placing your non-dominant thumb over the vent of the catheter for 15 seconds or less and slowly withdrawing the catheter while rotating it back and forth between your thumb and forefinger. Afterwards, you should encourage the patient to cough and allow them to clean up after the procedure. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed. References for the information and photos will be placed in the bio. Thank you.